Hello and welcome to another episode Hello. of Honest to a Mole with a very perky Mike, <laughs> aka Tupuds, and myself, Duncan. Welcome, Mike. How are you doing? Good. Recovering from uh, my trip home back to the land of my fathers. <laughs> yeah. God's I, country. I could tell when you crossed the border because I could hear music playing everywhere. Well, it must have played 20 times because I got diverted off the motorway at one point. <laughs> And I crossed the English and Welsh border, no joke, I think eight times. Seriously? Like, yeah. If you like, told me that, I'd forgotten. Driving into like, like you're in Wales. And I was like, oh, I'm home. Yeah, and then home. turn around and it's like, welcome to England. And I was like, <laughs> how the fuck have I turned around in the car? I'm on a straight Just you road. traversing the border for about yeah, 20 miles. Just literally, it took me along that border and every town was a different bloody country. So luckily, there's no passport checks. I never yeah. made it. You, but, um, <laughs> just, yeah. you stuck. just you. You've, how many times do you have to present your passport today, Mike? Uh, eight. <laughs> eight. God fucking. Just, just, I need a new one. It's full of stamps. So, hey, what's the name of the episode today, my friend? So we are episode 76 and it's, it's no dud. Plan did no. So Base. we've been in Wales at the Wales Whiskey Festival, uh, which yep. was in Plan did no. Plan did no, up in North Wales. Which was lovely. Beautiful. Beautiful part of the world. Lucky Absolutely Welsh people. Absolutely beautiful. I feel like you could get a job now for the North Wales Tourist Board. Because I was selling it. You were embraced in this community. Do you know what? It felt to me like, it honestly felt to me like, obviously it wasn't as sunny as, but it, it had sort of New Zealand vibes. That's a that's a, a high accolade, I would say. New Zealand vibes? Well, the scenery had kind of New Zealand vibes, yeah. Um, obviously the weather didn't and the people didn't sound like they were from New Zealand. And it wasn't warm. And it wasn't it was warm. Beach. It gets cold in New Zealand sense. as well, to be fair, though. It does, but, to be fair. But other well, than that, nice. basically, if you've never been there, look at some pictures that we've put on social media. Yeah. But it's a lovely little um, peninsula. Is that the right thing? Kind of sticks out from like the edge of the top of Wales, right? Mm. In a place called, is it Conway or something like that? Conway, that? yeah. Conway, that's it. And um, it has... Hill, like very hill, hills that look a bit like mini mountains ar- around the edges of it. They're obviously hills, not mountains. Yeah. And the coastal road that goes the whole way around it. And it's got two beaches. It's got like a sort of west shore and a sort of east or north shore. I can't remember which one it was. Mm-hmm. And the hotel where the whiskey venue was, um, St. George's Hotel, was on the north or northeast yeah. shore, which is a busy one, which has got this giant yeah. pier that goes miles out. But you've got all these amazing homes set into the hills and, and on the coastal edges. Probably all owned by your lot now. <laughs> probably, never lived in. Probably. All, all I heard was Southern. <laughs> all I actually heard was people that sounded they were from Liverpool, which is, of course, Loads North, 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 North Wellians. Yeah. Um, yeah, so it's really, really stunning. Mixture between kind of sand and pebbles. Can't fault it for the scenery. Beautiful. Mm-hmm. Can't fault it for the mountain goats. Whoa, they're special. Did you see any mountain goats? <laughs> I did not. I did... Uh, Found it strange that there was a, a male voice choir in every hotel I went in. <laughs> <Yeah>. uh, <laughs> every, every, <laughs> apart from the travel lodge. They didn't, they, tell you what, they struggled to finish the coffee shop that I was in uh, <laughs> on the Thursday. <laughs> but no, it was a really good crack. Like the drive up there was, it was a trek from down in sunny Kent. I can tell you that for nothing, especially with me having to make so many stops. Mm. Um, but good drive, fun drive, enjoyed myself. It reminded me of sort of the last time I've driven like that was Scottish Highlands where you can just overtake people. There's like nice quiet roads. You can just get around, put your foot down, go past yeah, people, obviously pegs. within legal restraints of speed, etc. But um, Which is yeah. 20 miles an hour, Mike, just in case people were wondering. <laughs> yes, I mean, some of it was. But Seemingly yeah, it was, all 20s these days. Yeah, yeah. there's also quite a lot of um, long, straight, single track road of which 70 is, mile an hour, which is great. There's fun. a few of those, that's true. Yeah. Yeah, it's stunning, I would say in, in Wales, but I couldn't tell you if it was Wales or England. It was between. <laughs> At some point, you must have got into the depths of Wales. We we drove from around the Lake District area mm. to Wales after spending the week with um, my parents. Um, mm. So it was only two hours and 40 minutes, that, that stint of the journey. And it was easy peasy. It yeah. was not until the way back on the Sunday that it was mega difficult. Yeah, I think. I probably next time, if you were coming from sort of London way, yeah. trains might be your best option, not save you a couple of hours at least. Well, before we get into the detail of the old festival, mm. um, what's been in your glass and what's been up your ass this week? Well, what's been in my glass is 
everything at the festival, basically. Quite a lot of stuff. Do you want me to hold off and do highlights of the whiskey or just go straight in? Pick out a couple of your favourites. I bought one bottle of whiskey at the festival. Ooh, what'd you buy? So I bought the bottle in of the Gower, which is a four-year-old Penderin. Right. It has then been... Well, basically, this bloke took it off to his rum factory, where he makes rum. Rum distillery, mm. I should say. He's then bottled his own rum and then shoved the Penderin back into the empty rum right. casks, aged it himself, and he tipped up, hoping to just basically spread his name, maybe sell a couple of bottles. And he had, I think, four left by the second session starting. He had no stock for the they second They flogged session. a lot of whiskey, didn't they, at that festival? Loads. It Loads. Like, but that was wicked stuff. As soon as I smelt it, I was like, oh my God, it's like all that Penderin sort of peachy note, super fruity. Then with this like sweet spiced rum on top as well. I was like, yeah, mate, I'll have a bottle. what numbers you got? And he's like, uh, I don't know how many I've got left. I was like, have you got 82? He went, yes, I'm going to have 82. There you go. What is, what, how is 82 special? Oh, of course you're a year of birth. So pick that up. That's in my glass right now. Um, Beautiful. What I came home with, um, through various means, is a bottle of Coles Organic Welsh Whiskey, a Glasgow uh, Isla Cass finish. Mm, cast which is firm, good, isn't it? Which is bloody good. It's got, it really pops, doesn't it? Like, yeah. I was say, sort of saying, well, why don't I just get an Isla Cass Whiskey? But it, it does taste different. Like, mm, it has massively. the kind of Glasgow thing, and it just has that kind of, like, um, undisclosed Isla pop to it. Yes. Yeah. Yes, uh, indeed. Yeah. Which no one could possibly undisclose peat crackle and pop. That's how I'd put that whiskey. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I've got an Ardemirk in cast strength, which I'm gonna give a little time because at the moment it tastes like petrol, but that could be yeah. me just being whiskeyed out, if I'm honest. So nice, I'll revisit that. Um, how about you? What's been in your glass? What was your selection from the festival? Well, I've picked up my favorites from the whole week, I think. So the first thing is. Uh, I took a bottle of Tamdu Dalby Alley 04 and cracked it open when I was with my dad, which yep. is still one of my favourite whiskies of the week. Oh, of course, you had a few heavy sessions up in Kendall with the folks, didn't you? Well, yes, or near Kendall. Or surviving the folks. Yeah, say, surviving yeah. the folks. Yeah, that's probably <laughs> a better way to put it. We didn't have too much. My mum dropped a few um, few classic mm-hmm. mum type statements. Auntie Welsh mother, yeah. Yeah. We love you more, Ag. Should have really... Organised for her to come to Wales as well. Could have been a sort no, of... No, she's not allowed. Could have been a turning point for her. She hates Welsh people. Um, my dad's banned. <laughs> I saw the signposts as we went down the road. <laughs> <laughs> Just with the red around the edges and a big cross through. Uh, yeah, I tried um, some Canaan Heads bourbon, 16-year-old, which I think I bought for my dad, which I'm pretty sure is George Dickel. And so I was drinking nice. that. One of my highlights was the bottle you brought along, which was that Pender in Portwood. Oh, yeah, strength. the Tawny Port single cast. Yeah, that I loved it. went the, down quite the well. Portwood at the dinner the night before was excellent, but the, but the car strength you had was the next level. I couldn't stop banging on and on about how good Ardenho Infinite Lock was. That's yeah. my probably my favourite whiskey of the festival overall. Not, you know, there was lots of very interesting, exciting whiskeys, but just in terms of if I had to have, sit and just have one whiskey in my glass from the festival, yeah. it would have been that one. Between us, we put a lot of footsteps towards that stand. Well, it, I th- I feel like they took they've taken a step up with the Infinite Lock. Now we only tried it the yeah. once with Paul before Paul Main, and that wasn't really enough for it sort of to register with me. But I've tried it several times yeah. since, and now I'm sort of looking at it as a sort of fifty five pound bottle, and that the kind of like reverse engineered type Kalila type thing where you get the sort yeah. of ash and the peat at the end, and the fruitiness and the creaminess comes in first, and that little bit of the change in mixing the casks in that one's really sort of suits it. I think that one yeah. even went more bourbon, and and we're close now to the, we're less than a month away potentially from a serious sherry quarter cask. So maybe that whiskey does really end up really well at each end of the spectrum, you know, like yeah. more bourbon. Versus and ABV, more. I don't know if you mentioned 50%. What, what I loved weirdly, stupidly weirdly, more than anything else, was the empty glass the next day. Because it was like visiting a distillery. It was yeah. so much of that sort of like, Toasted barley, fermentation, like the smells of a whiskey distillery are in that glass. Yeah. And it's yeah. beautiful. Yeah. yeah so really uh, stuff. probably my favorite ones from the week. When you go around to recap what you tried, I'll just chip in if I remember mm. trying it. I didn't try that many at the festival really overall. Uh, there no. were so many stands I didn't get around to. I did sort of generally have a wander around. What's been up my ass is uh, sleeping in random beds, uh, basically. Um, uh, my parents and then at some weird Airbnb 
we turned up and there was hairs all over the bedding. We had to get them to change the bedding. They came by and they changed it and that was pretty stressful. But Maybe even then the, the beds weren't there. very comfortable. <laughs> So it was a beautiful place by the sea in terms of location mm. on the West Shore, but the bed situation wasn't amazing. Did you Airbnb it? Yeah, I think we actually booked it on um, uh, uh, Booking.com. Yeah. But it was basically Same an Airbnb. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And I did see if I could book it directly. And the other thing that's been up my arse is, is getting vilified by you on social media for literally smelling the coffee, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> and I bet you've forgotten. As well. I've forgotten all about it. Forgotten all I about mean, it. it was it was the most entertaining thing <laughs> of the bloody Friday night I and mean, Saturday morning by far. But let's um, just have a recap then. From your perspective, what did I do that was so? From weird? my perspective, there's no there's no perspective. This is what happened. Right, this is on, fact. Right, facts. So we've had a lovely meal mm-hmm. and paired with some Pandarian whiskeys to go with the courses and stuff. And then I love the fact you have to give it a context. Like you can't obviously. just get to the weirdness. No, you can't get to the weirdness. You got to set the scene. So it's just right. a nice relaxed atmosphere. And then to, to finish the meal after we've had a lovely apple pie, coffees came round with some like lovely like rich whiskey fudge just beautiful stuff so the fudge gets put down coffee around tea or coffee coffee please my love thank you very much i was getting welsh and then the man <laughs> next to me uh orders a coffee and um she's like do you want milk and he went oh i only just need to smell it first <laughs> and i'm like going maybe he's had some bad milk or something before and he doesn't trust milk in restaurants and things no no duncan smells the coffee to decide whether he needs to have milk or not now, as an adult, you should know if you enjoy a milky coffee, if after a meal you enjoy a milky coffee or a black coffee. But one of the weirdest things I have ever, ever seen oh, is know. a grown man sniffing coffee to see if he needs milk. I, I, and the people agree because the I people had did agree. to then put this out on social media. Yeah, the people did agree Twitter with you. Twitter answered mm. and you are officially weird. weirdo. Yeah. <laughs> in my defence, um, I like my coffee. Oh, go on. I like I like my coffee, coffee both boy. ways. Yeah, yeah. But I'll have a go. I like my coffee both ways, uh, with milk and without milk. So I was really just sniffing it uh, <laughs> to see how whether it was bitter or not. That was it. Without trying it, yeah. <laughs> it's still a weirdo. It's still weird, isn't it? <laughs> it's so weird. Yeah. Imagine if I'd been wearing a gimp suit or something like that, and not just uh, you, you know, may as well have been, mate. Nice the way the whole place looked to you, you may jacket, as well just stripped off and naked. It probably would have made it less weird. Just for everyone clarifying, I wasn't on in the centre of a stage or anything. I was just sitting down at a table along, along with everyone else in their places. Yeah. yeah, but four people choked on their food. <laughs> One person had a heart attack and died. It was very tragic. Two people were carried um, out with shock. Yeah, one person couldn't make the tasting on the Sunday due to the shock. It like shock a continued it. shock. Yeah. So. Reason given. That yeah. fella sniffing coffee that fella on Friday was... night. <laughs> so, yeah, absolutely bizarre. It was great posting on Twitter. Good engagement. And just to continue the... Just yeah, just continue the, the ribbon, right? So what's been up your ass then? Because you only mentioned... What's been up like... my ass mm. is knobheads at tastings. Now, on the Sunday... I see, I didn't go to the tastings on the Sunday. We were traveling, just for people listening. We traveled back in the car. Me, me fairly tired and hungover, it seems. Mm -hmm. Uh, Mike, fresh as a daisy, got up and went to um, two tastings, didn't you? Got up, um, tried to get out of the hotel, went to Boots, basically picked up Imodium flu tablets, just everything I could possibly think of to make me get through the day. Um, Vitamins, smashed it all in. I was rattling, got myself an egg crest sandwich and a coffee, thought I'll I'll have a sit down on the beach. It was the first thing there and uh, went to sit down, just sort of get a bit of sea air. And then uh, Verity and Rich, who we know from Twitter and stuff, came out. It was like, yeah. taxi's going to be here in a minute. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Yeah. So, yeah, I um, I got myself in a taxi with them over to Aberfors. Stinking of egg and cress. So that I took it in the car with me. Ah. I, could st- I said to the driver, can I take this in the car? And he went, no. And I went, oh. Well, I was like, so I have to eat it now. He went, nah. I went, well, oh, you want me just, to get rid of it? He's just like, that no. Welsh sense went, of humour. But I, don't, I, I think he was just lost in translation somehow even though i am welsh i'm not from north wales and yeah but um so we get to abba falls and we do the we're the first ever people to be allowed into their aging warehouse and bottling oh, warehouse that's amazing yeah really good i wasn't on the list people had paid for this and i just basically pointed at the brand ambassador and she said i could come last night and went <laughs> uh all right we'll sort it after i was like yeah i'm not paying but yeah <laughs> 
<laughs> once, once I've had the liquid, <laughs> yeah, yeah, you can kick me out then. Try and catch yeah. me. <laughs> no, but they were good as gold. So um, we go in and we spoke to Glenn, who was like sort of there. I think he's being molded, started at the bottom and he's being pushed into every role through the company is what they normally do with people that are destined to go on and do a bit future ceo then i guess yeah kind of like master blender style um and he pulled out some casks and had them all sort of lined up and we're going around and then we just literally straight bourbon cast three-year-old then virgin oak and just as he's pulling them up there's water over there blah 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 so i went oh yes you definitely need to add water i um I watch a lot of podcasts, which got my back out because I'm like, you don't fucking watch podcasts, do you? I mean, you can, some of them, but no. I watch a lot of podcasts and um, Roy and Ralphie said that uh, if you drink cast strength whiskey, you're going to get throat cancer. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Just misquoting people left, right and centre right. and just basically carried on making up facts and saying that Roy or Ralphie had said them. Just complete lies, completely unrelated to anything that's ever been said by the pair of them, as far as I'm aware. And I was just like, oh, my God. And literally everything that Glenn said, whatever sample he this pulled out. This person said something. Well, I've watched a lot of podcasts and da 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 And everyone's just there going, oh, my God. And I just sort of whispered. I was like, can we... If you've got any empty casks, I can go and fucking stuff him in and roll him down the hill, please. And there's like everyone's trying to keep professional, and I'm like, I'm going to fucking lose my shit here. Yeah. But yeah, we eventually, he, him alone, and a know it all fucking people that don't know shit um, is what's been up my ass. Right. <laughs> Just <laughs> we're not getting too angry. Yeah, but <clears throat> yeah, I won't name any names. But yeah, be- probably best not to. But it's not good to, if yeah. you know stupid not... old fucker in a flat cap. <laughs> I've, not... <Yeah>. Um... <laughs> I've not watched uh, all of um, Roy and Ralphie's podcasts, but yeah. um, so I can't. can't pretty vouch. convinced they don't come with throat cancer warnings for every single cast. Yeah, but I'm pretty sure if they've ever said that, they wouldn't have said it on every single episode. Yeah, and every yeah. Time. You you must add water. You cannot drink cast strength whiskey. Is what yeah. he's telling everyone. Yeah. And I'm like, get away from me. Mm. If he tries to put water in my glass, we're going to have He would be saving your life, though, wouldn't he? No. So he annoyed me. But then, obviously, just to sort of carry on that, the rest of the tasting was absolutely class. We did some really good stuff. Tried their six-year-old. Mm. Um, tried some of their rye cask, just the bottles that's available. That's really good. Right. And their so turns was decent as well. Sotones. Sotones. Yeah. <sighs> They've got some interesting stuff coming. Their Oloroso casks were lovely. And... Yeah, it's just a really good tour. Miles away from where we were, but... Sweet. Um, and then once I'd finished that, literally got in a cab home, had a, a break for 20 minutes, and then we walked to Pendera and did another warehouse tasting. <laughs> so, yeah, that was absolutely mega. To be fair, I, again, was not on the list for that one, hadn't paid anything, and um, Rich, the brand ambassador, sought me out a free tour. And then when that was finished, he went, Mike, 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 come in. And someone dropped out from the, right. the tasting so he's like you can have his place if you want i was like oh fucking quality there's probably somewhere else having a moan about blaggers <laughs> just blagging everything for free yeah so um basically dived upstairs to the tasting room and um went through five drams from Penderin, and it was a single cask madeira mm. single cask tawny port then the festival edition so the four different sherry types in blood tubs mixed together and then one of the most batshit crazy things I've ever tasted, ash tree whiskey. Ash tree whiskey. Talk me through that. Yeah, aged, not in oak, in ash an tree. ash tree barrel. Oh, would have liked to have tried and that. And the only thing I can think that it even came close to, obviously far better, and it's like a bit of a shit thing to say, is the when I've tried the ice casks from Canada. Yep. Super sweet, like a sort of dessert wine. It was unlike anything I've ever tasted. And yeah, really, really good. Loved that. And then we finished with a 24-year-old uh, single cask, Penderin, mm. which um, I enjoyed. It was it was okay. It was like everything you get in a normal one, just sort of like refined a bit more. There was a big punch of oak, but I don't think it was over oak. I know Asta, the sort of head blender, um, thinks it's over oak. She doesn't like it. <laughs> so, um, but yeah, it was yeah, really she, decent. She pulled no punches, that lady. She's just no. exactly what she thinks is exactly what she yeah. says. Yeah. She's like, I don't know what we're going to do with that, but yeah, it's not for me. Yeah. Other people will love it, but not maybe they me. could just mix like twenty percent of it in with a different whiskey, yeah. right? I'll, I'll take it off them. It's absolutely yeah, it was good, mm. really good. So yeah, it was um, a really good Sunday follow up with the tastings and stuff as well. So 
Sadly, obviously, you left from cowardice or embarrassment from your coffee antics. So I don't know which it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we were uh, always planning to go back on Sunday anyway. We, so we were only booked until then. So, yeah. <laughs> festival itself talk me through it come on well for a start you organized some amazing pink hoodies so mega props Thank for that oh the merch was absolutely bonkers. loved those um at least four people maybe five or more tried yeah. to buy the hoodie off me mm-hmm. i could have sold at least 10 i think that's how much people were into the pink hoodies so yeah. that was pretty cool so that was my main learning point there is uh whatever whatever we're doing do it in baby pink go pink yeah <laughs> go, pink. <laughs> go baby pink um we were standing out quite a bit i think because of that because most people are in sort of darker colors and stuff like that whatever they were mm. wearing so um well i sort of set the scene a bit with um Juan did know earlier the only thing i didn't say was because of how nice it is and the fact it wasn't raining was i think on was it friday or saturday mm. i think it was the friday I was able to go for like a five mile run around the coastal roads and up to the summit, one point mm-hmm. to the tram station and run down. And, and that was amazing. It's the best run I've had in ages. Of the Orm, is it called the Orm? Possibly. I, I don't know what all the official names and stuff mm. are, but if you're into your running, especially if you you know like things a bit hilly, maybe from the north, of, you know, a softy southerner like me, then mm. you would really enjoy it. If you can get to that area, uh, you know, you know you're, you're doing whatever you're doing there, it's great for running or cycling, you know, maybe if you strap yeah. your bicycle to the back of the car or whatever, you know, you got it on a roof rack, you'd have an absolute blast. Roads are really good. Great paths, great roads, great footpaths. You said the family and did a fair bit. With Amazing them, views. Yeah, you know, well, we did the tram ride up to the, 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 the top of the hill, which is good fun. It's very slow, but, you know, it's, it's quite exciting for the kids. There's a playground at the top. Uh, it was um, Eva's first time on the arcade ever so i took him nice. on saturday and dropped okay. him yeah 400 quid's worth of pennies dog had a great time running around on the beach and the cobbles you know fish and chips coffee shops a couple of pubs all that kind of stuff really it's really nice yeah. it's great great little time and um mountain goats like i said if you go around the um some of the toll roads you can see all the mm. mountain goats whether you're walking or going in a car right it depends really but those mountain goats are amazing with their huge horns and their big Sort of shaggy goats, shaggy goats, shaggy coats, shaggy goats, shaggy goats, <laughs> shaggy. Yeah. Man. So that was really decent. Oh my god! Actually, just on the on Juan did know the most annoying mm. thing was there's like this little beautiful, dog poo. beautiful yes dog poo. So much of oh my it god. everywhere. People need to pick up the dog poos. Yeah, that must be a London just, and a Kent thing. Clearly nowhere, I nowhere wish else I'd anyone seen picks up a poo. someone letting their dog take a shit. Just <laughs> clearly people letting them off the. Can like, I tell you something? To run on the beach. I won't name the coffee shop, but on one of the days we were in the coffee shop. Uh, we're in a nice coffee shop. It's been there for many years. Because I was like, yeah. oh, you guys been around long? They're like fifty years. I'm like, all right, okay, sorry, guys. <laughs> anyway, other than the chef coming out having a rant. One of the owners walked in, who I later talked to. He's a lovely guy. Um, mm. I actually bumped it. We bumped into him on the beach, and I got talking to him. <laughs> the dog came in the coffee shop near the end and just took a poo in the middle of the coffee shop, <laughs> like what? like inside, not outside. Oh, inside, man. he cleaned it up. But I mean, um, I think dogs just, other than Leo, maybe all the other dogs in um, Hundidno weren't really. Um, were sort of yeah trained to work <laughs> or not just the owners weren't trained yeah. so what i was gonna say is uh, there's a be- there's a beauty scenic point on the west shore which is where we're staying and it has this little mini kind of lake thing which seemingly yeah. is just for people with um you know like what do you call them model or remote boats and yachts you know like to scale oh, no and yeah so it's one day when there was a whole bunch of them out there you know like whipping them around in the water and um eva goes oh daddy i really want one of those i was like no i know but they're quite expensive and they're actually quite difficult yeah. to operate she's like yeah but get I, her a u-boat she's like i really want one she's like <laughs> that is amazing can i have one of those and that's the first time we've had a conversation which was a bit difficult about something she's ever really wanted which probably costs <clears throat> a ton of money and she can't really operate so that was yeah. a little challenging because she didn't let go of that for a solid half a day she just kept coming oh. back to her going, Daddy, I really want one of those boats. Right. I might like go and find all these like clubs and stuff and just keep getting to keep sending stuff to your house. Yeah. Yeah, that would be great. Pamphlets. I'll just say it's just... a real yacht and not the um not the remote one. <laughs> <laughs> the, but the irony being is if they were real yachts, the people like manning them would have been like Lou Patience would have been like in really good shape. 
It was just a lot of men yeah, who <laughs> if weighed about 20 stone who looked like they couldn't walk more than 100 metres from their car, yeah. sat with like a remote controller. But they looked happy, so good on them. Exactly. So That's all that counts. back on the festival, I'd say is um, uh, organisers did a good job in terms of innovation. It, they really tried some different things. So hotel was a good choice. Um, yep. Good selection of whiskey distilleries and IBs. Always nice to see. Yep. Um, other than being in a lovely destination, they'd organised the choir who sang the first yep. thing. If They sang a few Welsh classics, I assume. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so shout out to them. There was a coffee station, which you were really excited about. And I think the coffee station... Oh. Uh, it was really good crack during the day. You could just go and have a coffee whenever you felt like it, have a little bit of a... Did you, you know, taste... One of them was the... The Pendarin one. Yeah, I quite like to get them on the pod at some point just to sort of chat They were lovely. Through. Or maybe I want to try and get their stuff pushed in somewhere in London, like one of the whiskey bars has got a coffee set up because they took Pendarin casks and dumped beans into it and then filled it with water. Yeah. And every day just rolled the barrels around their sort of yeah, they said, yeah. and stuff. And um, yeah, it was absolutely amazing. I tried both. Like, in itself, could make a um, a mocktail uh, espresso martini, obviously made with well, whiskey, easily. It carried so much booze flavour. It did. Without any alcohol, it's been tested. And it really is probably the closest thing I've had to tasting whiskey that's not alcoholic. So I was like, that, mate, genuinely, there is like something there. You could push this. What Sean was saying, Sean was saying if you had it in like a flat white, it, it's so creamy with the coffee that it tasted a bit like a sort of Irish coffee. Now, I didn't have that. I yeah. tried both their coffees, um, uh, black, you know, short black and did neat. You, did you sniff them first to yeah, see if you needed milk? First, is that yeah. what it was? Just so then I went back round <laughs> and queued to get milk. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that was really good. The coffee station was good. They put some nibbles out. That, that got a bit sort of frantic because people were, uh, you know, people wanted to eat the cheese and the meats. So they smashed through them and then sort of left it a bit decimated uh, for the next session. Uh, cupcakes kicked around for a while. The thing that was probably oh, most misunderstood cupcakes. was these bottle, bottle caps. caps. <laughs> Some people really enjoyed it. So basically, like, yeah. you've got five bottle caps in your entry and you could. Um, we were selling it, Mike. We were get we? a large. I know we, we were, were trying, there, was, we, but you get a large pour, so you can go and sit in the bar or sit in one of the chill out areas yeah. somewhere. But I think it, had you been more restrictive on the measures in the first place, if they were strict one CL pours, yeah, CL, um, CL yeah. CL, got it right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, then the tokens might have been sort of worth it if it was busier as well. But I think because it was like a really good ratio of exhibitors to people there was never like f crowding anywhere you weren't fighting to get stuff so you could take time they didn't have the 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 pouring controls on top they were just pouring out yeah, of like just bullying. standard bottles. So you were getting so, like two or three <laughs> yeah so CLs some, some people pot. come back to go um i've still got five bottle caps left and we're like yeah well, that's okay it doesn't matter like uh here's your bottle caps y yes okay so when people were yeah. walking in mike and i were stood uh handing out glasses and um, putting wristbands on people right yeah those ones that you if you get it wrong you basically just trap their hair <laughs> yeah yeah. yeah. there's a lot of pressure because you're like i liked it because i was going right do you want me to help you the wristbands and you'd be like no and i was like okay i'm gonna watch you try and put on a sticky wristband one-handed yeah and then when you move yeah, it when you... you're going to lose all of your and when, they, <laughs> when they've when they've tried for two minutes and they can't put it in they look up and they look they over back. you like Maybe I do need help. Yeah. And I'd be like, yeah, sure, I'll help. And Mike would be like, nope, get your friends to do it now. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were we were both helping people. So we were asking them, do you want a hand with it or you crack on? But we we're trying to keep them moving through. So as people are coming in, usually you've only got one job. Usually a whiskey festival, you say, here's your glass. Put that on your wrist. Enjoy yourself. We had yeah. three jobs. Here's your glass. Put that on your wrist or we'll put it on for you. And, and here's some bottle let's caps. explain to you about the bottle caps. Or as I was calling them for at least... Um, 10 to 12, 15 people, coins. <laughs> and someone went to me, they're not, can I just point out, they're not coins? Yeah, it's probably the same guy that was moaning at the tasting about um, <laughs> that you met. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so we're explaining that to people. Ralphie said they're always bottle caps always and bottle not coins. Caps, always, yeah. <laughs> they're very dangerous if you don't mix them with water. Yeah. So anyway, we had that. So we're there in our pink, pink uh, hoodies, uh, welcoming people in. People had a good time. 
Uh, let's talk a bit through the stands. What was there? What, so, to Martin was there. Good selection. To Martin was there. Good selection. There. Glasgow. To Martin. Uh, Annandale. Ardnaho. Glasgow. Yeah. Silky. Douglas Lang. Um, Irish. Douglas Lang hidden away right at the back. He had mm. some wicked little um, drums. Coles, as you mentioned. Coles. Penderic. Coles weren't there. No, the one I was hoping to get hold of, they, they weren't at the festival. Penderin. Aberfalls. Demile. Oh, English Whiskey with um, not the English Whiskey Company, but Exploring Richard English Foster. Whiskey with Richard Foster. Yeah, yeah shout out to Richard. Nice lad. Yeah, lovely lad. Uh, the Heart Cut, I think it is, Indie Bottler. At the back, they had some brilliant casks. They had a really like crazy Cairo uh, whiskey finish mm. stuff. It was mega. Well, obviously Hunter Lang as well because of Ardnaho. More than enough distilleries. Yeah. For the size of the venue and for the amount of I people. think so. It was right. never, it was never, it was Perfect. always busy, never too busy. That was, that would yeah. be my view on it, right? I think it looked like you could always engage with the store. And there was, um, I, I've got, there's two shout outs I want to make. So first shout out is Lark Fire. Is it Lark Fire, right? Lark Fire Water. Mm, so I think it's Alan and James. I have to check the names back, but I'm pretty sure it was Alan, Alan and James. So Yeah, I think it is Alan because I was shouting Alan. When she yeah, Alan. Said it. Alan. Alan. So <laughs> when they had like a thing where they were making cocktails. Right. And uh, but also they were making cocktails using the Lark Fire water, which was all around the festival. And it's at many festivals because those guys sponsor mm. a lot. So I took time to have a chat to them this time and just said, look, you know, is it really better? Right. You know, <laughs> is your product actually does it do know, they took it on the chin and they said they didn't lead yeah. in with all their data and stats. And I just said, well, is it would it be OK for me to to try it blind? They said no problem. So they got the same whiskey, um, Pandar in Madeira cask mm-hmm. put it under the desk so i couldn't see mixed one with you know standard tap water yeah. and one from wales obviously and one with their lark fire uh, water and in fairness i stiffed and tried them two three sips maximum you know tiny sip sniffs whatever and it was easy to pick out so yeah it, it's pretty easy to pick and then they told me that they did do a blind taste somewhere with like 500 people and apparently 499. I have to see if this is really correct or not, because this sounds extremely high. But they're saying that all, like 499 out of 500 preferred it with Lark Fire. So I, say we're given a 10. I don't know about that data. <laughs> what I can say is I could pick it blind and that there was another person that came over who didn't know was it, what was in each glass. Andy yeah. Wynn, I think, and he also picked it blind after. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, Andy, you do this as well. And he's like, sure, okay. Yeah, I mean, I've never really thought about it like this, but obviously, if you're spending a lot of money on a bottle of whiskey, maybe sort of eighty quid and up, you know, yeah. if you want to, if you want to mix it with water, especially to uh, to save your throat from cancer. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, if anyone has got throat cancer from whiskey, then uh, we are very sorry to hear that. Um, but to save your throat from uh, all the nasty stuff that could happen to it, or just because actually want to bring the flavours out in it a bit more, maybe mm. it's you know want to dial it back a little bit. Um, Life is a good shout and um, they've not given us yeah. anything. I'm just saying that I could taste the difference. So if you haven't tried it or you've had it at a festival just because because it was there yeah. and it was free, maybe just make a moment to try one with tap water and one with lark fire if you haven't done. Take a can home if they'll if they're there, yeah. I'm guaranteed. It was give low you a in minerals and you know, um but anyway, look And came out slightly yellow. Yeah, it does look a little yellowy, yeah. It's like it's yeah. apparently it's low in minerals. And the other thing was, before I forget, on the on the Friday, there was a nice guy called Rob. I can't remember Rob's surname. But Rob gave a nice little talk about raising money by cycling. So Rob, he has cycled all of the distilleries in Scotland, all of them, in one go, which took him like... was Whiskey Ventures. Was it? Whiskey Ventures. He had a nice grey polo shirt on. And so he cycled all the distilleries in Scotland and he raised money for the air ambulance. And he's then since cycled all the distilleries in Wales. As soon as people got a sniff that Rob might, you know, be interested in cycling, they were like, do England, do here, do there. Yeah. It was like a pile on. And he was like, oh, I don't know about that. I'm thinking about doing Ireland next. But, you know, it depends. Yeah. I think he's having a year off yeah. so he could actually see his child. That was it, yeah. So he could actually point, yeah, and then do some parenting. Ireland would be quality. If he did Ireland, mate, we can go and be a support crew. Yeah. I think We'd just go around in the van. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, Get yeah, someone yeah. to drive us. Drive behind yeah. him so he doesn't get any, like, help from the van. So what he was saying was that Scotland was easier than Wales because Scotland had lots of gentle slopes, right? And yeah. not didn't have so many tight bends so you could keep your speed. Whereas in Wales, be really sharp incline, sharp decline, and just when you got your speed up, there'd be a sharp bend. Yeah. And so he said that whilst Wales was a lot shorter and many less distilleries, actually arguably felt more difficult for a few days of it. And he's raised a lot of money. Fair play to him. Yeah, he has. 
for the Scottish and Welsh Air Ambulances. Yeah. So that is still available. We'll find the link. And if you want to donate at all, go and have a look at his content, follow his links, and you can still donate to the, I think the Welsh one's still open. So mm. yeah, really, really Herculean of effort. To Herculean do effort, that stuff. Yeah. Herculean effort. So um, now we look ahead to Glasgow. We do look ahead to Glasgow. But stand by. We need to shout out, who do you speak to at the festival? People oh, that follow. I've already done some shouts. Pad was there. Yeah, Andrew Pad was Sam Swindles was there. And I was Sam like, Swindles. He's like, hi, I love the podcast. And I was like, Sam? He's like, Sam? Sam, yeah. And I went, oh, you were the one, the mother-in-law. And he went, yeah, that was me. And I was yeah. like, yes, all right, come and have a dram. So I was Did you not think it was of... weird, though, he had a tattoo of your face on his forearm? No, I fucking loved it. <laughs> I wanted to get another one on the other side. <laughs> or just one on the inside. The back of of your, his... You get the back of your head on the other side. I want, I want a winking face of me on the inside of his left yeah. thigh. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but yeah. yeah so I was giving out some under the counter samples to people massive shout out to Richard uh, Richard and Verity yes. Verity and Richard depending which way you look got at it got me out of bed on the fucking Sunday and dragged me to some distillery yeah. so thank you um, big shout out to Richard Foster yeah. big shout out to who Rob else? who we just said Whiskey Ventures big shout out to Rob's mate James big shout out to Whiskey Amateur big shout out to is it Karina yep. Dram Corona yeah. Dram. And her other yeah. half. He was a lovely lad. Yeah, he was a lovely lad. Big beard. <laughs> Big beard. That's not his name. Got a shout out to Sean and Charlotte as well, Mike. Yes, fucking hell. Yeah. What an event. Not an effort. I mean, a lot for of effort got into that. First ever Welsh Whiskey Festival. And they've done that themselves. Yeah. Fucking hell. Another Herculean effort. Who was a lovely lad on Ardenho? Ryan. Ryan, that's it. Massive shout out to Ryan. Beam of light. Uh, shout out to Simon, the whiskey yeah. novice on the Tom Martin stand. Yeah. Got a lovely picture of Simon, by the way, just uh, picking his nose. Won't put it online. I wouldn't because he's got a lot of you. <laughs> yeah, of course he has. Yeah. I imagine he, <laughs> I imagine he will do. It's a very Simon thing to do. <laughs> shout out to the Annandale chaps. Lovely uh, lads on their stand. Yeah. And uh, yes, had a, a lovely session in the evening afterwards as all that continued. Again, Silky. Yeah. Um, I can't remember the name of the Irish one that was there as well. It was a uh, bloke and a girl. And it was his family that run the distillery. And I can't even say it. I've tried. I've looked it up and I'm, I've now followed them and stuff. But it's like, it's Beautiful. a long name. My Irish isn't up there. I'll work on it. In Spoken the in tongues. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but well i think yeah, we, we, we won't remember all the shout outs when we that's the no that's the reality of it it's a busy few days but yes i cut you off next week go on well we after this podcast the next one we'll be talking about glasgow yeah um probably some curries probably some whiskey and the event we're going to be on the stand with uh, glasgow whiskey distillery mm. uh, on the saturday on both saturday ses- sessions 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 I think so we look forward to that. It'd be nice with um, Seb and Libby. And, and some others. Think some, and some other stuff. Their stand has doubled in size, apparently, because someone's dropped out. So they've got even and more the bottle stock. selection. the bottle selection has also doubled in size. There's going to be a apparently. lot. Get yourselves to the Glasgow Whiskey get Stand. It's going to be uh, rather special. Look forward to it. Yeah. I yeah. can't wait. Hopefully I don't get too uh, lubricated in um, the British Airways uh, lounge before I fly. Business class. Yeah. Enjoy your fucking yeah. Ryanair, you <laughs> <laughs> I'm travelling light, mate. Yeah, travelling light. Standard. <laughs> All right. Well, that's it for me this week. Thanks very much for listening to the podcast. Much appreciated. And a thank you to everybody that we met in Wales. Thank you so much for making it a fun weekend. Yeah. If we haven't given you a shout out, it was not nothing against you. We're just still recovering from telling the truth. So, thank you for listening. If you uh, want to follow us, we are on at honestonmalt.com or on honestonmalt on all the social medias. Give us a five-star review on the podcast app of your use and uh, we will catch you on the next one. Probably hungover from Glasgow. Bye-bye-bye. <laughs>